How do you maintain that quality control across your business? Yeah, that's kind of the the scariest thing about scaling is handing the work over to other people. It's been challenging at certain times. I've had some good laborers, some not so good laborers. My two full-time staff now are great, especially my senior guy. I've been working with him really directly when he first came on board. It was really one-on-one to make him show him exactly what we wanted to have done. I write a really pretty heavy quote when I do everything and in the system that I use so that the guys can go on site, they can see everything, they tick everything off, they take photos. If we do have a complaint, I deal with it directly. So I take the same kind of belief that again that Jim does if there's a complaint that goes straight to me I deal with it directly but mainly it's really just giving them that that hands-on feeling that you're there and you're involved and that you're actually looking after it so Godfrey thank you very much for joining us today you're from Jim's Mowing Frenchers Forest in New South Wales and you started with this I'm just looking at the dates here 1st of August 2020 which would have been an interesting time to start a business for anyone so let's talk about that yeah, no, it was um, it was a really interesting uh, time for us. So, um, of course, you know, the great pandemic came down and kind of um, destroyed my previous career. And we were just kind of looking at what we could do. And um, I, I was Googling and somehow I think Jim's mowing just popped up. And so I called our local franchisor and uh, I went out to see him. And our local franchisor here is a great guy. And I turned up and I'm a big dude. You know, I'm about six foot five. And I did the work with him. He said, mate, you know, this would be great for you. You know, it'd be really good. And that was it. And I kind of snowballed from there. And what were you doing prior? For about 20 years, I was in the events industry. So my last job, I was doing um, basically creative design and operations manager for a large events company running um, IT conferences and things like that. Oh, wow. So a com- completely different change for you. So what was it? What, 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 what else were you looking at the time? Was it just Jim's mowing or what, what else were you thinking and doing? I, we looked at everything and I think it came up because we were looking at franchises. And so yeah. at the same time, my wife, um, because of her health, she um, lost her job as well. So it was pretty dire for us for a while there. And we were thinking, what can we do to kind of build a business where we can both be involved or, you know, one of us can do. And it kind of just popped up and yeah, it just kind of happened. So you've inquired about it. So did you go on a trial day or what, observation day or how did that all work? Yeah, I did I did a trial day with Graham. I did um three days actually. I went out with him and got on the tools and, and sort of, you know, went out for it and just kind of had a go with it. And like I said, Graham kind of took a look and said, look, you're a big physical guy. You can handle the work. You kind of know what you're doing business-wise. You should give this a go. And I was still a bit, you know, God, my, you know, is gardening really where I'm going to be going with my life after having this kind of career? And to be honest with you, I thought this would be a, a six to 12 month kind of thing. I was like, well, wait COVID out. I'll do a bit of work. It'll be good for me, good for my health. I'll get the business going. And then, you know, I'll get, you know, I'll sell it and I'll go back into my uh, career. So are you going to be selling it? Why, what do you think you've still here? So what's the deal? <laughs> no way. Um, look, it's, it's just been, it's, look, I, I'll be honest. It's been phenomenal for me. It's been so good. I'm earning more money than I was in my last career. I've built a business from from zero clients at the start to I think I've got around about 180, 190 clients. Wow! From me and my, you know, me by myself with one van. I've now got three vans, two full time staff, three to four casual laborers, and the business is growing, which is you know just something that's I never thought was possible in you know being a gardener. It's amazing. Yeah, I love you that you said that because people just look at the gardener and go, that's the gardener and they don't, you know, it's just amazing. But it's 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 so good to share these stories to see where you can take it. It's not just a gardener. Like obviously that's a, the service you provide, but you know, you can, if you want to grow to a big business where you've got three fans on the road and stuff, you, the Jim's mowing vehicle allows you to do it. Uh, 100%, you know, and it, it's really up to whatever you want. And my friends was always really good at saying things like, you know, he said, look, you can choose to, you know, have a really great lifestyle and just kind of, you know, work at your own pace and by yourself or if you want you know you can really grow it and w- one of the things that really convinced me with that was that my wife's health was um wasn't great a couple of years ago and we thought you know she may not be able to work and prior to that she was you know kind of the big money earner in the family and i was like well what am i going to do to kind of give her the relief that she doesn't have to work if she doesn't want to and you know thank god her health has gotten better but you know we're at a position now where you know, she's even talking in the next couple of years about coming and joining the business and becoming wow. a guard. She's like, look, you've got such a better lifestyle. You're fit and healthy. You're tanned. You're always outside. You know, I'm available for the kids whenever I need to be. Um, so it, it's, yeah, it's, it's really given us a new lease on life. And how'd you find the first couple of months of doing it? So was, did you do physical work before in the other role or not really? Or Yeah, um, yeah look, I, look, I played um, semi-professional basketball and stuff. So I'm a pretty wow. good guy. But to be honest, it's like, it, it's it's a lot different. And it was really hard the first couple of months by myself. 
I was really just pushing myself to really build up my clientele and, you know, deliver the customer service that my company has become really, you know, well known for in the area. And it was hard, you know, it was six days a week, seven till five, and then getting home, doing invoicing, scheduling, that kind of stuff. But as I got better at everything and more efficient and, you know, started bringing on laborers, it started to balance back out. And I've been able to, oh, we now, we do Monday to Friday. We don't work weekends. Um, No one in my team. It's a big thing that I like to do because I like to make sure everyone has their weekends for their family. But, you know, we work hard and most days, you know, we're finished somewhere between two or three o'clock in summer. In winter, you know, it's usually one o'clock we're finished by. And then, you know, you've got the rest of the afternoon to be with the kids, go to the gym, do whatever you kind of want to do. And uh, what sort of services are you doing? Obviously, um, you know, there's mowing and stuff which people know about. Are you doing like body corp stuff or real estate? So what other stuff are you doing? Yeah. So, I mean, look, lawn mowing is, is kind of the bulk. So I've got, you know, a team that does a lot of maintenance. Um, we do a lot of hedging, a lot of gardening, a lot of mulching. There's been a lot of turfing at the moment. I'm working with, I've got four real estate agencies that I do a lot of work with. One of them just uses me. So I do all their, um, specifically their ready for sale work. So they'll call me up, you know, go through, we've got a house going on the market in two weeks. Can you come have a look? What do we need to do? I'll go in, we'll do a huge cleanup and just basically get it ready to go on the market and get ready to be sold. They now just basically walk into the clients and they go, look, the gardener's going to turn up. He's going to give you an invoice, just pay it. Whatever it is, don't worry about it because he's going to make the house worth way more value than you would have thought. So that's been a really good part of it. I've done a bit, I'm doing a bit more um, strata work, which is really cool. And um, I've just taken on a really, a really exciting contract with the state government, one of the departments down here looking after one of their facilities. And then we've been doing cleanups there and we've been down there two days a week for the last five weeks um, doing massive cleanups and we'll probably be there for another three or four weeks and then it's going to be an ongoing maintenance. So once every four, that kind of stuff. That's great. And, and what's the key to you then building those relationships with real estate agents? Was there something where you just walk in and show your face and drop cards off or when you get that first job, you obviously smash it out of the park or how have you been able to build that, those sort of clients in your in your business? Yeah, it's been really, it's it's all about the customer service. Look, I didn't I didn't get to go down to Melbourne to do the training um, because of COVID, so I had to do it online. But I know that, you know, Jim, it's, it's such a big part of his belief system in the business. And it's something that in my previous industry, in the events industry, it's what I was really good at. I've always been good at talking to people, meeting people, talking to anyone from any sort of lifestyle, whether they're C-level executives or, you know, the the builders building my exhibition shows. And so to be able to go in and deliver that kind of customer service with the clients, the real estate agencies, they kind of, when I went to meet them, they kind of looked at, I was in, you know, the nice uniform, I'm clean shaven, you know, clean looking guy, went in, had a chat to them. That kind of worked. And then for the first couple of jobs, you know, really nailed it. And they were like, after that, it was such a big part of it, the customer service and the reliability. And that's really what's been the key with the real estate agencies is just being able to deliver what I promise, give them a good fair price and, you know, make sure that their clients are always happy with the end result. That's great advice. And I was going to say, because you've got perfect star rating on the gym system here. So how do you maintain that with your staff? Because that can be an issue sometimes for franchisees when they want to put on staff is that you're responsible, obviously. If they generate a complaint, you can't go to gym. Oh, that wasn't me as my staff. Wipe it. You know, it's, it's your responsible. So how do you how do you maintain that quality control across your business? Yeah, scale, that's kind of the, the scariest thing about scaling is handing the business, not handing the business, but handing the work over to other people. It's been challenging at certain times. I've had some good laborers, some not so good laborers. My two full-time staff now are great, especially my senior guy. I've been working with him really directly when he first came on board. It was really one-on-one to make him show him exactly what we wanted to have done. I write a really pretty heavy quote when I do everything and in the system that I use so that the guys can go on site, they can see everything, they tick everything off, they take photos. If we do have a complaint, I deal with it directly. So I take the same kind of belief, that, again, that Jim does. If there's a complaint that goes straight to me, I deal with it directly. I get the guys to go back out and fix it. And if the client's still not happy, I then myself go out and fix it and sort it and have a look. I've only had Oh, well, three clients that have really had to go and, and escalated further, but mainly it's really just giving them that, that hands-on feeling that you're there and you're involved and that you're actually looking at after it. And so I've only had to refund one client in the last three years. And um, that was just recently, and she's a long-term client. And it was really more to say, you know, look, the guy stuffed up. There was a few things that went wrong. I've come, I fixed it up. I'm going to give you a bit of a free service on the next one. And then we're going to continue on. And she stayed on as a regular client. So it was quite good with the end result we got out of it. Uh, it's great. It's great to hear that sort of thinking, that attitude towards that sort of 
relationship and a lot of that, that's the big thing for me with Jim's mowing. It's just the difference between us and the, the local guys and the independents. I know there's always an, it can be a thing between the two, but I just think that sort of what you just said, there's absolute gold and magic with it. And I was going to say, a lot of our franchisees struggle uh, to find staff and keep good staff. So you mentioned about not working weekends. What else do you do to find, obviously find them in the first place and how do you keep good staff in your business? Is there something that you do or... Uh, you no, know, I mean that—that that is a really challenging part of it, and you know, especially finding um, laborers and stuff has been quite difficult with COVID happening because you know we're working a lot of the travellers, and that started to change a little bit. My senior guy is a guy I've known for well, I think I've known for about 20, 25 years. Um, I, I in a previous life I was a personal trainer, and I actually used to training when he was a kid, and so I saw him around a few times, and you know, he wasn't looking very happy. We had a chat, you know, he wasn't happy with where he was working. He's working ridiculous hours he's got two very young kids he wasn't able to see them and i said mate look come give me a shot i can't pay you exactly what you're on yet but we can build up and we've got him pretty close to where he was before but lifestyle wise like i said you know he finishes at the latest at three he can pick the kids up he's there available he doesn't work on weekends there's no travel so he's loving that with the younger guys it's really been i pay above the award wage is one thing so i pay more than what they'd get normally which you know, for some franchisees can be scary, and it was when I first started, but to be honest, to keep them on board and keep them motivated, it's a real big part of it. And then I look after the boys. So, you know, if we've done a really big week, I'll take the boys out on Friday afternoon. You know, we'll go out for burgers and beers, have a bit of a, you know, a relax. You know, if the guys need time off or if they need to go do something, I'm pretty flexible with that. We work really hard. So when the boys are there, we work hard and we, you know, we smash out the work. But then, you know, when the time comes, you know, if we finish early in the winter, I'll let them all go. If we're finishing early in summer, I'll kind of let them go on that as well. And it's, you know, it's really balancing the lifestyle, the money and the expectations for it. And then making sure that they know that they're a valuable part of my business because without them, I'm left out in the trough. <laughs> so it's really looking after that makes a big difference. That's great to hear. And I was going to say as well, the equipment for your guys, what are your philosophies around equipment and how do you manage that amongst the big team? Because that can, could be cool or some issues if there's downtime and stuff with machinery. Definitely. Well, one of the big things I did when I first started was I wanted to be green. So I wanted to be as environmentally friendly as possible. So all my gear is Ego Power Plus, who I know is a partner of Jim's. And so every single thing that we've got is Ego. So whether it's from our mowers to our chainsaws, whippersnippers, everything like that. So First off, everything's battery operated, so we don't have to worry about petrol and oils and things like that. So that's a little bit of stress off the boys. They just have to make sure that every day they've got the right equipment. So I set them up in the mornings with all the batteries, what they need for the day. We run through everything so they know how it all works. It's all really safe gear as well, so they don't have to worry about too much about getting injured with the stuff so they feel more comfortable with it. And then, yeah, we just kit out all the equipment, which is, again, another one of the scariest parts for a franchisee scaling is buying lots more equipment. And then, you know, I show them the right ways to use it and stuff gets broken, stuff gets used and we have to replace it. But I just make sure that the boys always have good gear when they're working. And if they have that, then the rest of the job's pretty easy. Customers must love seeing it or knowing that you use all battery as well. Obviously, it's a big concern for a lot of people. And I think just having, you know, coming up with all battery gear, I think is a really good forward way looking forward because I talked to a lot of franchisees and they've got everyone's got different setups so I love asking this question because the guy gentleman I spoke to this morning um, up in the central coast uses all petrol and he's got a big team as well so it's just great to hear the differences between what's happening us and you're in a in a Sydney aren't you you're like northern yeah, beaches northern area beaches. yeah yeah so I presume for people more a bit more conscious about that sort of stuff and um, um, that's a silly stereotype but it's a bit more, no, no, more on their mind sorry, you're totally uh, right I've even got a client who um there's a client who nicknames me the go- the, the ghost who mows because uh, one day he rang me up and he said, are they coming today? And I was like, Patrick, I've already been. And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, we were there this morning around 11. He's like, I heard a mower, but I thought it was like five houses down. It was so quiet. I know, oh, mate, that was us. We came in and out. And that's what happens a lot. That's a, that's another reason the real estate agents really like me at the moment is because, as you know, my gear is a lot quieter. And so we can go into the strata buildings and things like that and get the work done. And, and we don't disturb the neighbors. We don't disturb the other clients. And it just makes it a lot easier. Plus, for ourselves, like you don't have to wear the big earmuffs and things like that because the gear's not that loud. And so it just makes it easier. And then all, I've, I've only got vans. I don't have our um, mutes or anything like that. So I had to avoid having petrol because you don't want the fumes and everything inside the vehicles. And we don't have to worry about any, any of that kind of stuff, including you know no maintenance. It's really just replacing blades and things like that that you have to do. Well, it's been interesting because I haven't noticed like 
obviously we manage the social media. I used to get complaints a bit, you know, this guy's blowing at bloody seven in the morning with the thing. I haven't had one of them for a long, long time. So I think most franchisees, even if they're using petrol for the mowers and stuff, they're, you, they're definitely using battery blowers and, and launchers oh, yeah. and these sorts of things. And I think it's been a great, great development um, for the business. And there's obviously, there you go, there's other, a lot of other brands as well. But I think it's just great yeah. to see that there's guys using this sort of stuff. I think I think it is the future. I mean, look in in the state of California in the US, they've already banned yep. petrol gear. So I, I can't, you know, you're going to get places in Sydney like Vaucluse and Mossman, you know, where where it is the higher end, and they're going to start pushing for that kind of stuff. And I just think it's a natural development. Plus, you know, it also saves a lot of money off your bottom line because you're not paying for petrol all the time and worrying about it. And once you learn the the ability to to kind of manage your battery systems and and charging up and things like that, it becomes really easy. And what about the power in the cup? Because that's obviously a lot of the times, that, you know, some buyers who just staunch, let's say, using the Honda HRU, which is a great beast, yeah. and that's what a lot of our franchisees use. But obviously, you know, it's hard for them to make that switch from maybe that to something like an Ego product. So what's for you, from your perspective, like um, how's, the, how's the power, all that sort of stuff um, from your from your perspective? No difference. Uh, the, the mowers have the same torque. They've got the same punch as, a lot of, as, a lot, as the Honda itself and as all the other mowers. You know, it's little things like, for example, if we we get somewhere and the grass is really long and wet, rather than just kind of pushing through and burning out the motor like a petrol one will, our mowers will actually stop and we'll just have to we'll have to take a break, get the whipper snipper out, chop it down, and then go through. But if the grass is you know normal, you don't have any issues at all. And I even had a guy, I had a guy from Telstra that was doing um, tree lopping around one of the power lines, and I and I uh, pulled out my chainsaw. And from the top of the cha- from the top of his little spot in the telegraph pole, he looked down at me and went, "Oh, nice toy!" And I looked at him and I had this big tree stump in front of me. You know, one touch of the button went straight through the tree stump, and he went, "Mate, wait there." He came down, took a look at it. He said, "Geez, so light, it works." Oh my god, can I have a turn? I said, "Yeah." And he went through and he looked back at his boss and said, "Mate, we've got to get these. They're way better." And so you know, it just works. It works just as well. I know that you know. There's a couple of old gardeners I've run into who are like, oh, you know, battery gear doesn't work. And I've let them use some of the gear and they're like, gee, this is a lot better. And it's even down to little things like the weight. The weight of now, um, my 52 centimeter mowers, they're about 15 kilos lighter than the Hondas and stuff, which, you know, when you're doing, we do, geez, in summer, the teams will do anywhere between 15 to 18 lawns in a day. And so when you're taking those in and out of a van, you know, it's, it's a, a 10, 15 kilos difference is a huge amount of difference for the guys. Absolutely. And um, yeah, you know, obviously I do a lot of these interviews and you sort of, even the staunch guys who use, they always use the Honda HRU, but they're starting to get the um the hedges and the other stuff with the batteries. They're slowly coming across. Some people don't, but that, and that's what they like to do. To do. But um, it's just great to hear that, um, you know, your business is operating at a commercial level with multiple employees using 100% environmentally friendly stuff. And hopefully Ego, I'm going to clip this up and send it to the guys at Ego, if they can send Godfrey some free gear to try, please do that. What do you, what would you like to try out Godfrey? Anything? Any, anything. I, lo- I look all my gear. The only the only piece of gear I don't have from them is the rider. Uh, but I don't know that's good, but, uh, <laughs> but that's I'll the I'll right, put this up. Well, well, you guys been a great supporter of Jim's Marling and Jason. There, I'll send this to Jason, who's their marketing manager, and see if they can do something and look after you. And I'll give him your email address. But I was gonna I was gonna say as well. Um, so what surprised you about doing the business? Because like what you said is a fantastic thing to get across. Like you know, you think gardening. Like I've come from this thing, and now I'm all of a sudden doing a gardening and. There could be a bit of stigma towards that. A lot of people have, you know, in Australia, you know, the cleaning or the mowing guy, yeah. people presume they're just doing the $20 or the $30. You can't make any money. So what to you has been the most surprising thing about the business? Has it been how you've been able to scale it or has it just been just mentally it's better for you or lifestyle wise or what's been the, the best thing for you? I'm going to say the best thing for me has been lifestyle. Um, I dropped about 20 kilos when I started. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Like I said, I've always been, yeah. you know, my weight's always been an issue. Um, my, you know, my family background is uh, we're ethnics. And so, you know, it's all about food. <laughs> Everything is about food. So for me, that was a huge, a huge thing to be able to, to lose that weight and keep it and maintain it. My senior guy, he dropped, he's dropped 25 kilos since he started. Gee whiz. Um, so that's been a really big part of it. The other thing, it, it, it is the scale and the money. You know, you never would have thought, or well, I never would have thought growing up, you know, that this kind of was the way that it kind of went and you could have done these kind of things. And now being in this kind of business, I've seen that there is that possibility. And it's really just what Jim's really offers you in this in this franchise, this level the mowing kind of stuff, is you can scale it any way you want. And that's it's really up to you as to how you 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 want to grow it. And I found that to be the most exciting part of it. But you know, being being in the corporate world before, you're kind of stuck in your job and you know, this is kind of what you earn and you kind of go through the world and that's kind of how you sit. Whereas here we've gone from, you know, 
I just looked. I did my record week the other week, and oh, wow. it's, I made in a week what I used to strive to make when I first started in a month. Wow. And, the business has grown and it's just it's for that kind of thing and every time you get one of those plateaus you think oh wow what can i do next how can i go next you know i my plan is you know by the end of summer i want to put on a fourth van and and grow the business to the next step and then you know as winter comes in it's been every year it's been a little less harsh on the business because i built the, the clientele and so i you know i'm getting to the point where i'm like can i get four five six can i get a seven eight vans and really get to the point where i'm kind of stepping back you know, doing three or four lawns a day, just keeping my my fitness and my health up, and you know, letting the boys do. And the, you know, I'm looking to recruit um, some ladies as well. I've got a couple of girls on the, on the line that, that want to come and work for me because, again, they've seen the benefit of oh, if I work for you, I don't need to go to the gym as much. And I'm like, yeah. And so <laughs> had a, a couple of a uh, couple of the boys' wives have come and worked for us, and they're like, oh, in summer, Godfrey, do you think I can come work for you some more? And I'm like, mate, hey, whenever you want. Like, it's always great to have. So, so I'm glad you mentioned the health benefits. I've interviewed a few franchisees and yeah, the health is sort of, we don't promote it as like a benefit of being a franchisee, but it's such a good one. Like if you need to lose a bit of weight, oh. it's a great way to, it's a great way to do it because you can't not, you can't not lose weight doing it properly and you're going to make a bunch of good money and be mentally a lot happier as well and lifestyle at the same time. It's a really good benefit. Look, Joel, it, it is a huge benefit. My wife, um, I, I get a health check every year. I'm, I'm 45 now. And so I like to keep on top of everything. And my wife looks at me and she goes, you just go to the doctor now to get a gold star, don't you? And the doctor even said to her, he goes, mate, if, all my, if any, everyone I had that's Godfrey's age was as healthy as he was, mate, we'd be a lot better. It's, I, you know, it's just been so good. There's, there's no issues out of it when it comes to health. As long as you look after yourself and you maintain yourself, you're doing really well with it. So that's the key, obviously, you stay hydrated and eat well. Because I remember when we had the box, I met a few franchisees who were with us around 20 years and 15 years. And... I always ask me, how old was you? And I couldn't believe some of them tell me they're 65 and 60 and they look like 40. I look really young. I'm like, bloody hell. Like, it's such a good thing to just to stay fit and active when, you know, rather than sitting at a desk all day like I do, for example, you know, you're out, you're out there, you're, um, you know, you, you're doing something. And I think I remember looking at the stats. I think they said gardens and florists are the top two for highest levels of happiness out of any profession. And you got in lawyers and you got lawyers and doctors down the bottom, but you've got the gardeners and the florists at the top because, um, it's just such a, good industry and unfortunately it's a sort of even though GMS buying is everywhere it's sort of a, a, a secret in a way like the average punter just doesn't realize how good um the business can be yeah and they, they make that presumption that's a gardener you know i'm only going to be earning this it's it's quite amazing well look it's you know um graham often gets a lot of the new people to give me a call because he, he has he said listen look if you're looking to really scale you know have a chat to godfrey see what the possibilities are and so i've had a few of them call and one guy actually rang up and said look mate i don't believe what your franchise law said there's no way you know he goes, mate, I reckon, you know, what are you doing? Like, you know, even a good day, you do eight lawns. And I looked at him, I was on the phone. I said, mate, eight lawns. I go, mate, my team and I, there's, and this was when I had, I think it was just me and, t- my, and two labor or two full timers. We did a week where we did 112 lawns, six hedges and four corporate buildings. And he was like, are you kidding me? I was like, no, mate, this is like, once you get good at it, you can really scale it and rev it. Like, I think our record for a day is 28 lawns between, oh, wow with a, a, me and two two guys working um, all at once in one van. So we go pretty hard. But <laughs> if you want to make the money, you've got to work hard. Absolutely. And I was going to say as well, um, I should have asked you before when you were talking about your your system, what sort of, how do you manage it from the business level? What software packages and what sort of system maybe, do you want to just tell for the guys and for anyone listening about yeah. the structure of how you operate the business on the admin side? With, um, you mentioned photos and things like that, which is great. Yep. So just talk about that system you've got created there. Yeah, so I use um, this isn't a plug for them, but I use a um, an app called Service Mate, um, yep. which is really good, and so that helps with your scheduling. It allows you to do all your workflows, everything like that. Plus, the best thing is it ties directly into Zero, so I can send all my invoices go directly from that system. I can actually take photos, and I can actually track all my um, staff members with it as well. So from the app, I can see where any of the boys are, how the teams are doing. Um, they tick off jobs as they go through. I can even literally like press a, one of the buttons on it and it actually shows me exactly where they are. And so then it gives times for each of the jobs when they check in, when they check out, it keeps like reviews where everyone, so I know exactly what's happened between the client, whether there are any issues, things like that. And that's super important. Look, scheduling is one of the hardest parts and as you scale, it becomes more and more time consuming because you've really got to deal with weather, you know, clients, all those kind of things. Mm-hmm. 
you know, it's always the sometimes some clients move to fortnightly faster than others. And so it's just balancing that. It's a really good system for that. And then, of course, zero. Zero is phenomenal for your accounting. I'm also blessed that my wife is a chartered accountant and she kind of no, stuff in my books. That so helps. I'm with that. <laughs> yeah, very <right. laughs> It's one of the best assets of, of, that we have. So um, I'm really lucky with that. So she does a lot of that, but she's teaching me more and more. And, you know, I just finished off paying all the employees, which is um, always a lovely feeling to be able to do on a Friday hour. So they've got money for the weekend. Um, but yeah, that it's if you can find good apps like that that work with the business, um, it just works really well. I used to use the Gyms app. Um, yep. uh, that for me worked really well on a smaller scale. As a sole trader, yeah. Yeah, but as I scaled bigger and I had employees and I had to allocate more and more, I needed something a bit bigger yep. that was better for it. It's just, it's worked really, really well. Yeah, no, I'm glad you said that. That's a good point. The Gyms Jobs app, sole trader, you know, you started, but not yet ready for that scale sort of thing. And there are other things, you know, we're being transparent that can do a better job from managing a business with multiple team members. And do you make them send photos after every job or how do you is it how do you yeah. maintain that quality at each job? Yeah. So once they finish a job, they take a photo. So if it's just yep. a lawn, I'll get them really just to take a photo of the, kind of the, the lawn at the front, just so that it shows that they were there and um, they've done the job. So if ever I get a client that says, oh, the boys weren't here today, I can actually go, actually, they were here at this time. This is what happened, blah. So I can go back to them, which is really good. The app itself has a, a photo feature, so you just take it and it locks it straight away to that job for that client. So I can go back into the system and go, okay, on you know November the tenth, you know where were they? Okay, click. Yep, they did that, and here are the photos for the job. Now, in the early days, you would have come across a lot of new things that you might not have come across. Like you might have been asked for some different things from customers and stuff. How did you go in in the early days? Can you recall about that? Because it can be quite challenging time sometimes. You get a job that you don't want to knock back, but you don't know how to do it exactly. Was there? How did you skill yourself? As you progress through your business, how do you upskill? Yeah, um, first thing was I'd give Graham a call. So I'd give my franchise or a call and I'd ask him. And if he if he didn't know, which is very rare, I'd then dive into YouTube. And so to be going into YouTube and, and seeing what I can and can't do, talking to other people I know as well, which is a really good thing. I've got a couple of mates who've been gardeners for about 20, 30 years. Oh, wow. So I've gone to them and said, you know, how do I do this? How do I do that? I think also, Joel, one of the biggest things I, I've, I've been really good at is knowing when to say no to a job. And when to say yes to a job. So I've looked at some jobs and I've gone, you know, it's a little bit out of my uh, my scope. Rather than kind of risk doing a bad work for the client, I've got them in touch with, you know, either a landscaper mate or a, a paving mate or someone like that. That's really helped. And it's also helped to go and network and find those people. So, you know, you find someone who's really good at, you know, paving or something like that, and you can use them into your jobs as well. And so that kind of helps you scale and, and, and get those bigger jobs. Now, are you off leads at the moment or are you just working on referral work or what, what's your, are you still taking leads? I am taking leads at the moment because I'm looking to grow the business. So at the yep. moment, it's a, it is. I have every summer, usually I'm off leads because it just gets too busy. But this summer, I'm taking on as much work as possible because I am looking to grow and take on that extra van and those extra people. Awesome. And I was going to say about now um, fees as well. Obviously, there's fees involved in a franchise. How do you think the fee lines up to what you're doing in, in the business? How do you think that? Did you, oh. Do you find it fair or how do you look at that? I find the fees completely fair. I've um I've had quite a few people come up to me going, oh, you know, Godfrey, now that you've built the business, are you going to leave gyms and, you know, yeah. and I'm like, the fees, are, and this will sound really bad, but the fees are peanuts. Like compared to what you can earn and what you can really scale to, you know, it's it's nothing when you look at it in the grand scheme, especially for what we get, the, the marketing, the referrals, the, the safety. There's been so many clients who I've turned up to to do quotes and, you know, I'll have the hat, the gear and everything on. And I walk up and they go, oh, you're in a uniform. Oh, you're neat. Oh, you you know, your gyms. Oh, oh, okay. And it straight away puts them at ease. That support. And if I've ever had any issues or anything, you know, to be able to lean on to, you know, Gray, my franchise or Jim's IT, even Jim himself, you know, to be able to have that, that contact and that touch, it's so important. And it just makes you feel like you're not alone. And then the final part is the franchisees themselves. We've got a real... There's a real brotherhood on the Northern Beaches. There's probably 10 or 12 of us and we're in a WhatsApp group and we're always talking and, you know, one of the boys will be like, you know, oh, I've got a couple of extra rolls of grass. Does anyone need grass? And, you know, yeah, I do. Or, you know, does anyone have this? Or can I borrow this bit of equipment? Or, you know, does something happen? I often get a few of the boys ringing me up going, you know, gosh, I'm taking on a, an employee. What do you say? You know, what's your advice? And everyone really works together. And it can be really scary when you start off on your own because if you've come from a corporate world, you're often used to having a team around you. And when you go in and you're own, it, it can be scary. So to have that support around you makes a huge difference. 
Absolutely. I love that aspect of gyms. There's a lot of um, the regions have their own Facebook groups. Some of them are WhatsApp groups and um, just the camaraderie, you know, because I said a few of these things up, you see the messages and just the camaraderie between the blokes and, and the girls swapping jobs. And if someone's away or do you want a customer here or do you want a customer here or someone done this, everyone gets back to with each other within five minutes. And I think it's fantastic. And it's a big, important part. You're right. If someone comes out of a corporate environment and then all of a sudden you're in a business, it's a massive change. So you need people to lean on it. And um, having supportive franchisees, which most gyms people are, it's fantastic to hear. Now, could I throw some other questions at you? You helped us make cool. the beer commercial, which was fantastic, which is the lawn lager. So people might recognize you from that. So how do you reckon, what do you reckon of the lawn lager of the can design? I know you're a beer connoisseur. You've got your um, Instagram page where you review a lot of beer. So how was it? Yeah. So uh, it, it was delicious. So uh, yeah, my Instagram is uh, big G beer for anyone who wants to follow me. But um, look, the lager was fantastic. I was actually really surprised when they said it was a mid strength. I was like, oh, okay. But that's uh, really full bodied. Um, I had a lot of fun with uh, the guys from Bondi Brewing to to do the ads and, and to do the actual um, stuff. I got a few friends ringing me up, going, "Did I just see you on a beer commercial?" And I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> they were like, "Really?" And I was like, "The gyms?" I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> um, so it actually came out. Look, it was really good. The beer is delicious. It's fantastic. Um, I've been, you know, I've got a few of my friends who've actually jumped on it and have uh, been buying cool. some local places that we can get it down here. But um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, he wants to do it again. So he messaged me the other day. He wants to do another. I think he's too scared of Coopers though, so it might be a different can design, but um, I think he wants to do it again for the full strength one. So he reached out to me the other day and hopefully that will start maybe December or next year. I'm always happy to review it. <laughs> yeah, well, well, we know you can do it. So it's fantastic for us. I'm sure Paul will use will use you again for um whatever content they want to do up there. So we'll, we'll definitely do that. And I was going to say as well, your basketball, what was your position? What'd you play? Oh, so I played center or power forward. Um, I yep. played for, uh, for many, many, many years. I played for Northern Suburbs. And uh, I now coach down at Natalie with, um, for my daughters. Well, I did get to go to the US to college for a little while. And I played for um, the Maltese national team in 2007. Really? Um, yeah. I've had, look, basketball's been, yeah, it's been, it's been the best for me. It's, uh, it's all my friends are basketball players. It's, it's nice. I'm 6'5", 6'6". So uh, I go out and I'm actually not that tall amongst my mates, which is really cool. Uh, <laughs> Which is really good, but yeah, it's a it's a huge passion for me. And coaching now and um, coaching my daughters and their friends is is just so much fun. Did you go to college? I was at Tennessee State. Really? Yeah. So I was only there oh. for a while. I had a a little bit of an altercation with one of the uh, guys, and I came home. But um, now I've done a bit of mentoring for kids that have gone over there because I went over in 1997, and I think the internet was it was just starting, so it was a whole different yep. world. Now you know, with videos and everything like that, it's it's so much easier for the kids to go over. How was it being an Aussie over there in the American college system back then, especially like would have been a very new thing. They might not have even met in Australia or knew where Australia was on a map. So how was it back then? Nashville, Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, I was a little bit of a celebrity on, on, on uh, campus. Uh, Steve Irwin was very big at the time. So uh, I, uh, I spread a few rumors around that uh, we didn't actually like Steve Irwin because he was giving away all the Aussie secrets. And uh, I had a few of the guys on the team believing me that uh, when we went to um, Florida for basketball, I was telling them that I could catch some of the alligators because they were soft compared to the crocodiles we had back home. But uh, yeah, I had a bit of fun with the boys. And every one of the guys um, on the team was from New York. And he looked at me and he goes, when these guys figure out that you've been yanking their chain, mate, they're going to go crazy. And I was like, yeah, it's too much fun though. But like, they didn't believe anything. Some of them believed I had a pet koala. Um, I told a few of the guys we rode wombats as four-wheel drives because we didn't have SUVs in Australia and they believed it, which was uh, interesting. We, we, had a, we had a few, it's funny you say, we had a few um, college, uh, we had a few basketball teams, high school teams come out to our school to stay with us in the States and they're from Texas and, you know, we used to do the same thing. We used to say, oh, you know, oh yeah, the kangaroos, that pouch is for beer. So, if, you know, you put your beer in it, you get a kangaroo, you just pull it out and and they just eat it up, you know, being obviously very nice people. But, um, yeah. You have to do it. It's it's a right. right. It's a right of passage. It's a hundred percent. I could I couldn't not. It was just too easy. But Godfrey, I'll leave you today with this because you've given us more than enough time. Um, thank you very much uh, for sharing all the information. It's great to see you so happy. You can tell you're so happy, Thanks. and obviously, um, there's so many benefits um, that you're getting from the Jim's Mowing brand, and it's exactly what it's about. And um, yeah, hopefully, when the beer comes out, we'll get you to do the new ad for him. And hopefully, awesome. the boys, hopefully the boys from Ego Jason, when he sees this, um. They can send you up some gear or something to try. I'm sure they love they love getting the gears into the, the mine guy's hands. So, you know, I'll flip this to them for that. Awesome. Thanks, John. Just look, anything for anyone thinking of starting a franchise, just do it. Just get involved and just do it. It'll change your life for the better. Uh, thanks, mate. Appreciate your time today, Godfrey. Have a great weekend. Thanks, mate. Thank you for listening to the episode of the More Than Just Mowing podcast by Jim's Mowing. If you do need help with your local gardening expert, please give us a call at 131 546 for Australia. 
0800 454 654 for New Zealand or head to jimsmowing.com.au or jimsmowing.co.nz. If you liked what you heard, please make sure you leave us a review as well. Wherever you consume your podcast, we appreciate your support. And until next episode, we hope you have a great week.